West Ham United are the opponents today, viewers. A lot of games have passed and one new face has arrived. We are coming towards the business end of the season. So after that Bournemouth game, then on a Friday, viewers, where we won 2-1, we then drew 2 all with Leicester, where we were 2, well, we were 1-0 down in the 11th minute with our own goal, drew it back to one all, then we're 2-1 up, and unfortunately, the 84th minute, we conceded and drew 2 all, but still, not a bad point at all to have. We gave Manchester United a good go, however, in the league at Old Trafford. They were 3-0 up, Sola brought one back. Then they scored to make it 4-1, and you got another one a minute later to Solar To go to Old Trafford, lose 4-2 in a decent performance. Not the worst thing in the world. To be honest, I was more worried that we were going to get absolutely hammered like we did at the start of the season, but we performed a lot better in this game. We then turned our attention to the FA Cup, where we played lower league, well, lower, lower division, lower league, lower division, whichever way you want to call it, Tramia Rovers, where we played as well, a first team, a strong team, and we only won 1-0. I was hoping that we could have put, no disrespect to Tramier, 3, 4, 5 past them to try and build confidence up. We won 1-0, we got through, but it was a sluggish performance from us. And then Spurs did us over once again, where we lost 4-1 at home. They were 3-0 up inside 12 minutes. We got a consolation goal with Lankett, and then they scored in the 52nd minute as well to make it 4-1. Against West Brom at home, we let two leads slip. We scored with Gibbs in the 15th minute, then an equaliser by Jack Clark in the 37th minute. Sola got another goal to his name in the 51st, and that lead just lasted five minutes, where Sam Day scored to draw two all in a game where we should have really won. And to concede two at home, let the lead slip twice, disappointing. Things did pick up a bit better though at Craven Cottage as we beat Fulham 2-0 on the road with Solanke getting a goal and Jose Ronaldo getting his first of the season to secure all three points. Then against a tough Liverpool side, we lost 2-1 at home. Again, a game I was expecting us to lose. We put up a really, really good fight in this and actually could have snuck something late on, but unfortunately, the two early goals from Trent Alexander-Arnold and Luis Felipe did the damage and Solanke's consolation in the 69th minute meant we couldn't get one back unfortunately a little bit too late for us and then we bowed out of the FA Cup with a 1-0 home loss against Brentford with Oli McBurney getting the decisive goal in the 53rd minute another disappointing performance in a competition I would have liked to have gone through to the next round just to build confidence up a little bit more as I said though, viewers, we have brought a new face in and coming from AC Milan is George Alexandri. He can play up top and mainly what we brought him in for is to play on this right-hand side where Vistaran is. You look at the pace and acceleration, he's got 16 and 17. Good dribbling, decent first touch, finishing's okay at 12, decent passing, good technique. I think with a bit more work in a couple of years if we were to carry on with the save because obviously we are at the end of the cycle now and we're just going to play this season and see if we can survive, basically. And then that will be Football Manager 20 or 21 done. He will be a very, very good player. But I think he will come in for the second half of this season and do quite well for us. He's played two games so far. He's got a 6.65. Not the best start, but I think he just needs to grow into this team a little bit more, and he will settle in quite nicely. He's come on loan for the rest of the season, and we're paying him £8,000 a week. So the addition of Alexandria and the results that have happened since that Bournemouth game me, we are sitting just three points outside the relegation zone. One goal better off than Sheffield United as well. West Ham are the opponents today. They're currently flying high in fifth position, but we've got some big, big games coming up. But hopefully a draw today would suit us to the ground. It could potentially take us above Newcastle. We're a team we've got coming up. We've got some teams around us, but again... As I said, we've got this one last season here. What happens? We're going to just look at making survival now. But we're in a very good position to do it with 14 games remaining. Can we pick up a point here against West Ham? Let's go have a look at the starting 11 and find out. And here we are. Then the starting 11 is Miglaccio in goal. A bat for Fran Garcia, Archer, Diasse and Perez. Skip and Radomonski in the middle. Slanke on the right. Solo on the left. 
and George Alexandre and Scogland leading the line for us. That's the other versatility about Alexandre. He can play up top. Hopefully Slanke on that right-hand side can be effective as he has been. He's got 10 goals to his name this season and Sola has got 9. Good to see that Sola's getting 9. If we get two players on double figures this year, you'd be very happy with that before the start of the season. Here we go then, kickoff is here. As I said, we are away from home today. And as we know, we aren't always the best on the road. In our all blue kit, can we find some goals? It's been an opening 15 minutes of pretty much quiet. One shot on target, which has come to us out of the three shots in the game between both teams. Something we need to improve is just trying to get shots on target a little bit more in the second half of this season. Perez with a throw in there, launches it into the air and it's headed away by Helm. Skip picks it up into Fran Garcia. Archer launching it to Slanka on that right. Heads it on to Perez on the overlap. Will he get the ball in? It's headed away by Tanganga, but comes back to Perez. Skip back to Perez. Ball in. Scoglin's waiting. And Scoglin. Oh, Scoglin's blasted it past the post. We've got another highlight, but it looks like West Ham are going to launch a counter-attack here. Sinstera coming forward. He's had acres of room. Skip past two. Thankfully, he puts a weak shot in, which Miglaccio is equal to. And he just can't get over that Scoglin chance. I thought he was going to put it into the back of the net. And the ball just flashed past the post in what looked like a really, really good effort there. We are going to demand a little bit more with a couple of minutes remaining before half time. And half time is here. Nil nil away from home. And I think, to be honest, we've not done too badly there. It's been a very quiet game. West Ham have had eight shots, four on target. We've had three and one on target. But for me, what we've seen in those highlights, we've looked the better team. The stats don't show it, but I currently believe it. We'll pump the fist, tell the boys we aren't doing badly at all, but it is time to improve as West Ham with an early highlight in this second half. We're a minute and five seconds into the game. Ball's headed over. Ball's whipped over, sorry, and missed the header. But Brobby, oh, he scored, but he's offside. Brobby, the winesman over here, has got his flag up. Brobby did look offside. That's why I went a little bit quiet, because just to see what was going on, on that far side here, let's have a look. He did look a good few yards off. Yes, he is. There's a big gap there. Two players have committed towards the number 77 there. But thankfully, Brobby is offside. And it doesn't make us pay Perez into Scogland. Back to Perez. He's been influential on that right-hand side. Fine Slanker has picked up a knock. Might have to make a tactical change just to bring him off and reduce the impact of that injury. And hopefully, be able to still get something from this game. Bowen coming forward for West Ham. Amazing run from him here. Plenty of options for him. Maduke into Alacron on this right-hand side. Can we defend this ball? Fornals, Maduke, back to Szymanski. And it's, oh, the ball's bounced off our defender. It's fallen to a West Ham player. It's still with West Ham feet. No oh, one, Sinstera. Sinstera has put the ball into the back of the net and we go 1-0 down. I mean, the ball, the way it's bounced off our players, just fallen to West Ham players two or three times there, is very, very unlucky for me. I still don't think we deserve it. Sol is getting a 6.1, which is unlike him as well. What is up with Solank here? He's got a potential groin injury. That'll be affecting his game. We'll bring Gibbs on, on that right-hand side. We'll bring Sola off as well for Silvera. Up top, do we make a change? We haven't really got anyone to bring on. Middle of the park, Ramonski and Skip are both having decent games with a seven apiece. We'll just leave that double sub for now, replacing both wingers in the hope that their trickery and bravery can get them some, get us something in the second half. We are going to demand some more. We've still not had a shot on target since our first effort in the first half with 15 minutes of this game remaining. It's something we need to do very quickly, get something back, but it looks like the game's petering out. Nine minutes remaining. Ball coming down, Radomonski heads away, but he gives it to the goal scorer Sinstera. He's moved back with the ball here for West Ham. Alicorn, Alicorn, sorry, into Maduke. Coming forward, plenty, of, a big gap here, which we need to fill. We've not done it. And Kerez, ball across to Brobby. And he gets his goal this time. He stays on side, and it is 2 0. Game set and match. We are done. We are done. I mean, it's just poor. Really, really poor. We've not gone with the player here at all. We've com Again, I think it's Perez that's committed a little bit too far forward here. He's gone to the ball, left Carez, who squared the ball to Brobby. 
And he finally gets his goal. One shot on target. Disappointing. Where does this leave us in the league? We do drop now into the bottom three on goal difference. With 13 games remaining. We're going to throw the arms. Tell the boys we're not very happy with that at all. What we'll do is viewers, we'll leave it there for today. And we will come back for the game against 19th place Blackburn Rovers. Who we play next. Two big games coming up. We've got Newcastle and Blackburn. Blackburn is a winnable game. They're both winnable games. But I think if we come back for the Blackburn game, we could either see us basically fall further into the relegation place or see us climb out of it and potentially go above Newcastle as well. So that is where we're going to come back. Blackburn Rovers, two big games coming up. And then what we'll do is we'll spread the games out over the week a little bit more. As I said, the end of the week will be the culmination of this season, the culmination of FM21, and hopefully it will bring survival. But if you have enjoyed that, viewers, please don't forget to smash that like button for me. Share the video around and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let me know down in that comment section below as well how you think our survival chances stand this season. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again for more next time.